Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode of Tubules Live. Today we are very privileged to have Dr. Jason Smithson with us. So Jason, welcome to the show. Hi. Um, we've definitely been looking forward to this, I'm sure you have as well. Thank you. Um, everyone knows a lot about you already, but if you don't mind, just give us a little bit of a background about yourself. Where did you graduate from? Where are you working right now? Well, like yourself, I qualified from the Royal London Hospital, although it was considerably earlier in <laughs> 1995. Uh, from there, uh, I did various, various house jobs in and around London. Um, and now I'm working in sunny Cornwall, which Lovely. is a really nice place to live. Great. Okay, so your topic for today is the dentist as an artist technician. Any particular reason why you chose this? Well, I think that dentists in our training are really focused towards all the technical aspects of yeah. dentistry. And I think really, I'd like to give a lecture about the techniques, but I'd also like to focus on the artistry as well, because I think that's an area that's really missed. Sure. Okay, so we're all definitely looking forward to this, but before we crack on, uh, just to remind you, CPD questions are on this side, so make sure you send them in to get your verifiable CPD. If you have any questions for Jason, which I'm sure you do, um, type them in the box below and we'll make sure we take them um, in part three. And finally, um, NSK are doing a competition uh, for your chance to win an NSKS Max uh, Pico, which is a small handpiece, great for minimally um, invasive dentistry to uh, email your name and address to that email address on uh, the piece of paper here. So, um, without further delay, I'd now, now like to hand over the floor to Jason to kick off today's show. Thank you. Thank you very much for that kind introduction. Um, hi from Stevenage. It's uh, been a long time since I've been in Stevenage. I was last here uh, 20 years ago as quite a junior SHO. Um, I had quite a lot more hair then and quite a lot less waste. Um, Anyway, before I start, I'd just like to make a very brief disclosure. This presentation has been supported very kindly by both GC and NSK. In the past, I've received financial sponsorship from GC, Carl Zeiss, Ivor Clark, Kerr, Triadent, Horaeus Colza, Adent, Clinician's Choice, and Velopex. One thing I think is really important is that all these cases in the presentation today are everyday dentistry. All of the cases have been carried out on normal, fee-paying patients in my own private office within normal treatment time frames. In other words, I haven't booked the patient in specifically just to take photographs of the case for a lecture. What I've done is I've booked the patient in for a normal treatment time, done the treatment, and as I've gone along, just taken photographs of the case. With regard to the photographs of the case, there's absolutely no Photoshop in any of this presentation other than straighten, crop, and exposure, exposure adjustment. The cases are all my own other than where credited. So the presentation today, what I'd like to discuss are two things. The artist, as the dentist as a technician, in other words, how do we achieve posterior composite restorations that require little or no adjustment after removal of the rubber dam? And the dentist as an artist, in other words, how do we produce anterior restorations, class four, class three, and class five that are indistinguishable excuse me, indistinguishable from natural tooth structure. So first of all, the dentist is a technician. What I'd like to share with you first of all is a very simple, easy, but yet predictable technique that will allow you to produce beautiful, lifelike, aesthetic, class one and class two restorations that require very little, if any, occlusal adjustment and have firm proximal contacts. On all of that, with only one or two shades of composite resin, and a couple of instruments which you all already have in your own offices and in a time frame that is reasonable for the average general dental practitioner in the average office. In other words, what I'm talking about is spending about half an hour doing a class one restoration at a maximum and about up to an hour doing a class two, maybe about 45 minutes for a class two, a small class two on a premolar, up to maybe an hour to do a class two with maybe a buccal cusp replacement on a lower molar. So, that's quite a big claim. Let's have a look at a case. This is Laura, or rather this is Laura's upper right quadrant. As you can see, Laura has had a root canal therapy. Uh, she's, I don't do root canal therapies. I'm kind of dangerous in pulp chambers, so I refer all my root canal therapies out. And um, Pete, my endodontist, has done a root canal therapy, and he sealed the pulp chamber with a temporary cement. And what I've got to do here is to restore this with direct composite. So what we did first of all is we isolated the case. Here we have some rubber dam in place 
Uh, we've isolated the whole quadrant with latex-free rubber dam, and we've got some floss ties in place just to invert the rubber dam and to stop any gingival seepage around the margins. Then we did our preparation. The preparation is very, very minimal. The way we did the preparation is we just removed the uh, temporary cement from the center of the restoration using the electric handpiece. I like to use the NSK 5 to 1 speed increasing electric handpiece for this because of the precision. And that would leave a tiny smear of uh, temporary cement around the outside of the cavity. I then removed that with a scaler and then air abraded the cavity with 27 micron alumina. So I actually did no more preparation than my endodontist had already done. So it's a very minimal prep. We then applied dentine bonding agent. I used a fourth generation dentine, dentine bonding agent for this case. So we etched, washed, primed as a separate stage, and then placed our adhesive, then light cured that. Then we did something rather odd. Um, I wanted to reduce the, the stress within the restoration. So what I used is a resin modified glass onomer. The resin modified glass onomer I used in this case is called Fuji 8 which is a self-cured resin modified glass onomer. In other words, it's not light cured. Now, this glass onomer is kind of slightly unique in that it achieves modulus, it achieves its stiffness very, very slowly and also without light cure. So, and it also shrinks very little. So if you inject uh, that resin modified glass onomer to a level of about a millimeter short of the dentine enamel junction, that fills the bulk of the cavity. So this is kind of a bulk fill technique using the old closed sandwich technique, but I've